We're going to talk about the ads next. And I'll be honest with you, none of the ads really stuck out to me. And, and the nationwide ad, you know, something, I didn't oh. even see it when it was first on. It's atrocious. I, I think I was tweeting something, and I had my head down looking at my, my, my keyboard, and I missed it. I did watch it this morning. My wife and I watched it, and I was like, this is what everybody got so upset about? I mean, you know, look, I'm a parent, okay? And I have two daughters, and they mean the world to me. And it, when you are a parent, you you really do understand the significance of that. If you're not careful or if you're not paying attention, even for a split second, bad things can happen to your children. Whether you're driving, uh, whether you're in the house, whether you're outside, that if you are not paying attention or you're not prepared, bad things can happen to your children. I, and I think that's what Nationwide was trying to accomplish with this ad. Unfortunately, it did not come off the way I think they wanted it to. But I can't believe that they would put this ad up and not have any idea that it was not going to create some type of controversy. And of course, with social media now, especially with Twitter and with Facebook, that the the outcry is more immediate. It's not like you're going to wait till tomorrow morning to call your local nationwide agent to complain about this ad or corporate. You're going to go on Twitter or Facebook and you're just going to vent right then and there. So I, I yeah, and I like I said, there were some bad ads. It just seems like the car ads were really horrible. Uh, I mean, you know, the if you're... The Nissan one with the dad. Yeah, I mean, was, Harry Chapin. I mean, yeah, I'm sure the millennials the... in the crowd really understood <laughs> that one, huh, guys? I mean, the thing is, with advertising... Now, Robert and I are about 20 years apart in age. I'm in my late 40s. He's in his late 20s, okay? So we look at things differently. For me, if you're going to sell me a car... May, tell me why your car, why I should buy your car. What makes it great? What features, what technology, what safety? I mean, what what st makes your car stand out from someone else's car? That's why I it's, love the Chevy Colorado ad. Yeah, that was good. I like that one. That was that? Yeah, I did see that one. The one but, with the 4G, I think. Yeah, yeah. The, the Fiat one, you know, <laughs> that was funny with the, the old guy. The that old, was one of my favorites. Yeah, the old yeah. Italian guy. Uh, Trying to take the blue pill and, of course, yeah. Although... Come on, I, I showed that video to my wife this morning. I thought that was a hilarious, you know, commercial. But I'm like, well, think about it. Do you think a little pill like that could go through all those little <laughs> ping, ping, pings and oh, remain in one on. piece when it entered the Fiat's gas? I mean, come on, it hits off a bell. It goes around a fan. I mean, come on, it, hit, it literally it's all over the place. And this thing is going to be in one piece to, to go into that gas tank. I mean, come on, you have to suspend reality. I understand that, but it's come on. It's a powerful Powerful little tablet. But yes. none of those none of those ads, I mean, I hate to say this, but none of the ads really stood out to me. I'm not, it's not like I'm saying, oh, that was a great ad. I mean, like I said, the Fiat won a little bit, but but that was about it. You yeah, know? Yeah, it it wasn't a it wasn't a great year for Super Bowl ads. No. You know, I thought last year's there 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 was uh there was a lot of comedy involved. Yeah. And this year it took a real dark turn. You had yeah. the you had, Serious. You had the Nissan ad, yeah. you know, with the dads and whatever mm. crap that was. You had Budweiser taking a shot at craft brew. I was going to mention that. I thought that was like, wow, Budweiser. <laughs> you were tired of these craft beer guys taking shots at us. We're the behemoth. We're the Goliath of the brewing industry. We're going to exert our force on you. Sam Adams cowers in its, like, colonial boots, right? And I don't <laughs> think so. I don't think Sam Adams is cowering in anything. Yeah. Or Land Shark or... Dog head, right? Is that the dogfish head? Dogfish head, yeah. I mean, you know, they look, it's people are gonna drink what they like. If they like Budweiser, they're gonna drink Budweiser. If they like the craft brewer brewers, they're gonna love they're gonna drink that. I know it's Budweiser's the number the, one. They own, beer. I know. I mean And here they are yeah. complaining that people are drinking craft beers. Yeah. It's like seriously? Look. You know, you're the number one consumed beer. You can get Budweiser at, what, almost every Every, major league ballpark? I mean, come on. Absolutely. I mean, it just... So, you know, I'll tell you, you know what commercials I wish would come back? I wish Miller Lite would bring back the the old athletes. Those (laughs) commercials of the 70s and 80s with Rodney Dangerfield and... Billy Martin and of course Bob Euchre, which was those were the best ones. I mean, I'm sorry, they were great commercials. They were funny. They sold the beer. I mean, it's just they need to get a bunch of retired athletes, not Warren Sapp, obviously, and they need oh. to wow. and to, to, to use these guys in these beer ads. And I, I think there's got to be some former athletes out there that would not mind drawing a paycheck from Miller to hawk beer. I think those those ads would be great. You know, either to bring back the Bud Bowl. Bring back the Bud Bowl. The Bud Bowl was fun. Yeah. 
You know, we were glued back in the in the early '90s, late '80s. We were glued to the TV, waiting on the, what was going to happen in the Bud Bowl. And with the technology now, it's not like you actually need to use real bottles and stop action. You know, you can do CGI stuff, man, and, and do the Bud Bowl. So. Yeah, that that's one that I would I would bring back because I think a lot of uh, yeah. You know, if you want to appeal to certain age groups, right. heck, even me, you know, as a kid, I remember the Bud Bowl yeah. thing, and it was fun. It was fun. It was yep. fun. It was entertaining. Yeah. So, you know, things like that, and and that's really, you know, I remember the Clint Eastwood ad. At, what was it, Chrysler or something? I yeah. think that's when it changed. That yeah. you know, oh, you know, people, I guess, really talk about these, you know, dark, mysterious ads. Yeah. Well, when you all do them, it's not that interesting. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I understand the Super Bowl is different than your average sporting event or your average anything because you have so many people watching that you're trying to, like, literally just blow them out of the water, so to speak. You're just trying to really do something so impressive that, like, wow, man, that was a great commercial. What was it for? Um, um, see, that's the thing. I mean, to me, you want to make sure that you're selling a product. You're spending all this money so people buy your product. And, yes, you can be dramatic or you can be funny, but... Make me want to buy your product. That's really what the ultimate goal is. The next day, I should want to go to my local grocery store and buy your product or, your, or my local car dealership and buy the car or whatever. And, and unfortunately, with these ads now, I think it's almost like the ad agencies are like, okay, this is what so-and-so is going to do, we think, so we're going to try to top them by doing this. I think it's almost like it's a competition for the ad agencies to see who can do the, the craziest or the most dramatic or the, the most talked about ad. And it's not really like we're trying to sell product. We're trying to create buzz. And, and I just think that defeats what advertising is for, to sell a product. Nailed it. Mm, thanks. Appreciate that. <laughs> Reluctantly, he says it. <laughs> All right, folks. Anything else you want to add, Robert? I'm good. All right. Hey, by the way, Auburn native Bob Sosi, he called the Patriots uh, winner there on, on Sunday as the play-by-play uh, -play man for New England. Uh, I'm going to try to get in touch with Bob in the near future, do a column about him for later on this week uh, for AuburnPub.com and the Citizen in print, and I will try to link, I will link, to, if I get it done, uh, to his calls from this game. He did a great job. I'm really thrilled for Bob. He, this guy has earned uh, everything that he's uh, accomplished. He's worked hard, and I'm really proud to call him a friend, and I'm thrilled for him because he deserves this more than anybody else to call a game like this. So hopefully we'll have that, uh, info, you know, that stuff for you guys soon. And again, we'll see you next week. It'll probably be uh, Bills and Dolphins maybe, finally. Probably. All right, folks. We'll see Gotta you next. Talk about football. We'll see you next week. Thanks again for watching.